Well, good morning, and welcome to our, our new series entitled Nazareth. This week, as we have um, entered into the hidden years of Jesus' life, we've begun to uh, get familiar with the surroundings of Nazareth, and we've looked at his, his parents, uh, Mary and Joseph. Uh, what kind of people were they? And, and we have begun to take a look at their marriage to each other. Yesterday, we took a look at what kind of wife was Mary, and today we want to ask the question, what kind of husband was Joseph? Now, just like with Mary, the scriptures tell us very little about Joseph, his identity as a husband. However, what the the scriptures do tell us is pretty significant. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, we read, and I quote, When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Mary was betrothed to Joseph during the Annunciation. And this is pretty significant because according to Jewish culture, uh, back then 2,000 years ago, marriage took place in two stages. First was the legal or true marriage. It was celebrated with a ritual. And then only after a certain period of time, the husband would bring his wife into his home and then they would live together. That was the second piece when he would bring her into his home. So at the time of the Annunciation, Mary and Joseph are already legally married. They are betrothed to each other. And what's happening is Joseph is getting house ready, and he is waiting for the time when the house is ready that Mary would move into the home. So it's important for us to understand that Joseph is already a husband. He's already married to Mary. And they're already married And the scripture said that she was found with child. Mary conceives a child while she's already married to Joseph. And you can just imagine how that affects Joseph. Now, I want you to think about this. What type of man, what type of husband loves his wife so much that he would honor his, his wife as her husband and not divorce her quietly, as the scriptures said that he intended to do? What kind of man decides to, to not do that, to, to, to receive his wife, even though she's conceived a child that's not his own? What kind of man does that? Well, a just man does that. A holy man does that. That's why we took a look at Joseph and his heart just a few days ago when we said that, that he was a just man, and we, we unpacked what that meant just a few days ago. So what we know is that Joseph is a just man, he's a holy man, and today I want to zero in on the fact that Joseph was a man who listens. Joseph listened to God. Joseph wanted to be a good husband because Joseph was a good man, he was a just man, and Joseph loved God. Therefore, when it came to being a husband, the only voice that Joseph listened to was God's voice. You have to remember that in the opinion of Nazareth, in the opinion of the, quote-unquote, the world around him, Joseph was not doing what the popular opinion was. Most of the guys in Nazareth would have divorced Mary. The consequence to that would have been her stoning. Joseph didn't listen to those voices. He didn't go along with popular opinion. He didn't accept the culture around him. Joseph certainly had the right to walk away. And this unexpected conception of Mary was not in his plans. However, Joseph wanted holiness more than he wanted himself. Joseph loved Mary. Joseph loved God. And Joseph listened to God. Unfortunately, the voice of the great American dream is is often louder than the voice of God. You know, we've all heard it. Um, you can have it all. We've heard the voices, hey, you're in control of your own destiny. We've heard the, the culture whisper to men, hey, be your own man. In fact, perhaps nothing describes the culture that seduces American husbands more than the recently publicized statement that We're the ones we've been waiting for. 
if these are the voices that American husbands are listening to, then is it any wonder why 50% of American husbands no longer want to be husbands and why over half of a marriage has ended in divorce? What kind of husband was Joseph? He was a husband who wanted to love his wife so much that he was listening to God and determined to listen to God and to God alone. And imagine what our nation would look like if every husband in America was listening to God more than they were listening to themselves. Imagine what our marriages would look like if every husband was listening to God more than they were listening to the seductive memories of what it means to be a bachelor. Imagine what America would look like if every husband was listening to God more than they were listening to the great American dream. Who do you listen to? And and who are our husbands listening to? Who are we really listening to as the model of what it means to be a husband? And for my brother priests out there, who are we really listening to as celibate priests who are called to be husbands like St. Joseph? Now, here's the good news. God is listening to you. Mary is listening to you. Joseph is listening to you. Regardless of what your marriage looks like, regardless of what kind of husband or wife you've been in the past, today is the most important day of your marriage. Listen to me. Today is the most important day of your marriage because today is the day that you're in and today God is listening to you. What are the voices that you listen to as the template for your marriage. Listen to God. Listen to Mary. Listen to Joseph. Listen to them. After all, look what happened to the world because Joseph listened to God. For your prayer today, I would encourage you just to um, imagine how many times Joseph would have prayed with his own wife. Imagine how many times the two of them, Mary and Joseph, as a married couple, would have prayed with the Psalms. So today, I would encourage you to to begin your prayer by reading Psalm 61. Uh, As with the Psalms in the past, read it maybe two or three times. Once you get really familiar with the text, uh, maybe let a word or phrase really speak to you. And then go to Psalm 85 and do the same thing. Read it a few times. Let a word or phrase speak to you from Psalm 85. And then I want you to imagine uh, in your imaginative prayer the following hidden scene from Nazareth. I want you to imagine that's an ordinary evening in the home of Mary and Joseph. And let's say Jesus is probably just a few months old. He's still an infant. He's sleeping. And Mary and Joseph, they have the evening to each other and they're just kind of with each other. And, and they want to pray. Now Mary, who sang the Magnificat, well, just imagine what kind of voice she would have had. And imagine her singing Psalm 61. And then imagine Joseph singing to Mary Psalm 85. And then after they sing those psalms to each other, Like they both sit in silence and they listen. And they listen to what is God saying to them about their marriage. And you're there. You're you're in the scene. You're with them. And they both turn to you and they ask you, Hey, what's on your heart? What's on your heart about your own marriage? What's on your heart about who you listen to? What do you want to tell them? 
and listen to what they say to you in reply. God bless you.